Hello. Good morning. Back in the fancy minivan. Yep. <laughs> I was trying to be Minnesota tough today, but it's it's chilly. I walked a little bit and my toes were cold, so it might be a personal problem. Yeah, it's a little it's sunny out and nice overall, just a little bit. It's just nicer in here. We're more comfortable, so we'll probably talk longer. <laughs> <laughs> We have a lot to share. Uh, big day yesterday. <laughs> Again. As, yeah. <laughs> and many of you, uh, if you've been following our journey, um, been meeting my my family that I didn't know about the other half of it. And it's just been pretty incredible. So we're looking forward to sharing that with you. And um, we're in our soap study, looking at uh, Acts 3 and Exodus 20. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Good morning, everyone. And we have a fun blessing story to share. Fun blessing story. Just another encounter with another awesome guy, too. I just, this was a jam-packed day yesterday. Um, so, yeah. I'll pray and <laughs> get into it. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Mm. Well, Father, we thank you just for who you are. We thank you for how you are just showing yourself so real in our life right now, Lord, and uh, that you have orchestrated this from the beginning of the foundations of this earth, and it just so wows me, Lord, that, that uh, all this stuff plays out, and Lord, how you work everything for good, mm-hmm. and uh, Lord, that your promises are always yes and amen, and uh, Lord, that when we just trust you, just amazing things happen. So Lord, today we uh, we just come before you, we read your word, may it, may it encourage us and uh, continue to speak truth to us, may it remove the lies of the enemy, and uh, may we uh, just continue to walk in that courageous spirit that you've given each one of us to, uh, to love one another well, and uh, just to continue to pour out mercies new on each one of us, Lord, and uh, may we release that over others as well. Thank you for this study, thank you for this time with uh, each one of our friends and family, and uh, just this time yeah. together with my wonderful wife, Sarah. Bless it, and uh, may it just be good. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Yeah. So I don't know where to start. Um, start with the blessing first. All right, blessing first. Because that's first. kind of a side thing. <laughs> well, yeah. Sort of. So, um, blessing uh, story. So, doing our $20 blessing last uh, night we had her going to get gas and Sarah we all reminded we like, we needed gas and we also were like well we forgot we haven't done our blessing yet for today yeah. and uh, pulled into the gas station and of course right next to me pulls in another car and it was like a, it was a younger couple um, but I'm filling up the gas getting my stuff going then I look over and so she's sitting in the uh, sitting in the driver's seat and then um, a guy gets out and I don't know, they're probably in their 20s maybe a little bit older maybe I don't yeah. know maybe upper 20s, upper 20s. and mm-hmm. um, I was kind of looking around the, the gas station was pretty busy so I'm just going okay Lord who who should I bless who should I approach and this guy was here but he didn't look real approachable you know it's just kind of weird he's already filling the gas kind of got his back to me and I don't know I was overthinking it so but they end up leaving. Then I see a guy walk in, and uh, I don't know. He he looked kind of angry, <laughs> and so I thought maybe I should go talk to him. But I I, I wasn't sure, so I, I went into the gas station, and and the reason I share all this because I know that's probably real for all of you too, and I want to encourage you to break through and whatever and do this as well. So I went into the gas station. Um, and I thought, well, I'll just roam around the gas station and see if there's somebody there that jumps out. And um, I think I had to go to the bathroom too. So I went to the bathroom and then came back out. And, and I thought, well, maybe that guy that looked angry, if he's still there pumping gas, he was a couple pumps over for me. I'll walk out and talk to him. But when I came out, thankfully he had left. So I didn't have to talk to him. So I, <laughs> no, he left. And, um, and then when I came back in, I'm walking around the gas station. I look and I'm like, Hey, that's the guy that was right next to me pumping gas. Mm. And then I'm like, that must be the girl that was with them. So they must have filled up with gas and they left and they just parked and they came oh, inside. Oh, I got it. And so then I, then you know how <laughs> Holy Spirit speaks. He's just like, well, there they are again. I'm going to give you a second shot at it. So 
I'm like, okay, so they're they're kind of picking up some snacks or something like that, and um, I walk up to the guy. I'm like, hi, I'm Josh. What's your name? And he's like, Sam. And I'm like, hey, Sam. And then she was kind of standing there too. And I go, are you guys together? And she and he's like, she's like, yeah. And hey, what's your name? And and she goes, Abby. I'm like, oh, hi, Abby. I'm Josh. And they're kind of just looking at me like, okay. And then we all got masks on, of course. Um, and I said, hey, I just I felt prompted by God to give you guys this $20 bill. And uh, I just want to let you guys know that God sees you and knows you and hears your, your prayers. So here you go. And they just kind of looked at me and, <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Well, it's uh, not happening every day. To yeah. <laughs> and and then they, they took it and, um, and they just stood there and, and I said, Hey, I just, are you guys a couple? And, and they're like, yeah. And I, I go, said, are you guys married? And mm -hmm. they said, yeah. And I go, um, I go, you know, may, may the Lord bless your marriage. I mean, this, I feel like there's a reason I'm here. It's something like you guys are a very special couple and, uh, the God's got great plans for your marriage. And, um, I just, I just want you to know that. And I go, how, how can I pray for you guys? And, um, so we're in the gas station, of course, but he's, they, they like look at she like looks at him and he's like well he has to go off to military something like training or something like I thought he was going off for like like to be deployed deployed um, but actually is he's in the reserves and he has his weekend coming up yeah so he's gonna be gone one weekend a month and uh, a year, right? and then they then he kind of looks at Abby and he's like well and she just lost her job and so she's in the the hunt for a new job and I'm like oh okay perfect. And so let me pray for you guys right now. And so I, I just prayed for protection and health and uh, that things for Sam, that he would not be in any fear. I thought he was getting deployed, like I said. So I'm just like, you know, the Lord will go before you and nothing will hurt you or harm you. And and it was, I'm sure it was a prophetic prayer for his life in general. And um, and then I just said for Abby, I said, Lord, just this is a blessing from you that she's going to get a better job and it's going to be a better fit for what she really wants to do, Lord. And may that come quickly. And may it just be a sign and a wonder that you are with this family and that you love them and you see them right where they're at. And that was pretty much it. Look up and Abby's got tears rolling down her eyes. And I was just like, oh, Holy Spirit, you're so good. And she just like looks at, looks at him and I'm like, you know, I just want you guys to know that God loves you guys. He's so proud of you. And uh, they're like, thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm like, yeah, you're welcome. And then I just kind of like, well, it was nice to meet you guys. I'll see you later because I, I don't know, it felt awkward, so I left. And come back out, me and, the, me and Kaden. Kaden was standing there with me, which is awesome. Yeah. And um, went back to the van, got in, done pumping, and kind of right as we're getting ready to leave, all of a sudden, Sam comes out to the side of my car. <laughs> he's standing there, and, and so I rolled down the window, and and he's like, what do you say? He's like, hey, thanks again. Um, yeah, thanks again. I just have, I have a question for you. Yeah, he's like, I have a question for you. Because my wife and I were just discussing earlier, well, last week or over the weekend, that we want to start going to church and we just don't know where to go. And do you have a recommendation for a church for us? And we're like, what? Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. So we're just talking about wanting to go to church and they're asking us for a recommendation. We didn't really know. I said, well, we're, we're just we traveling. We some ideas because we know of some great churches down here. Yeah, so we, we rattled off a few and then we were like, this. And then know. he said, well, we're looking at this one and we're like, yeah, 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 that's good. And we just kind of gave our opinion of um, kind of what to look how for. to find a church yeah. that believes in the Bible and teaches the Bible. Yeah. Um, and then we got to talk to him a little bit more, got some more details, found out that they, they've just got married like six, six months, months ago. Yes. So what a great timing to come and bless their marriage and. And them together as a couple. And kind of hearing their, their story of how they found each other. And yeah. They didn't date for very long and they got married. She's from here. He's from New York. New York. <laughs> and uh, met her and moved down here. So then he's like, are you guys going to move to Texas? Well, then we kind of told our story, you know, because that was, it all came out when we didn't really know what church is. We're like, we're actually not from here. Um, but uh, he's like, are you guys moving to Texas? And we're like, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Found out we have family Anything's here. Anything's possible. <laughs> So. Yeah, just, uh, but just it was fun. It's fun to talk better. to people that are like transplants to Texas and mm -hmm. sort of what their opinion is. You know, you always want to want to hear that. Like, how'd you end up here? Do you like it here? Yep. Yep. Yeah. 
So that was so fun. Uh, yeah. Super fun. You could tell he was all energized too. And just, you know, when you, what's well, the presence? It's the presence it's of the, the Lord. Presence. When you invite him in and uh, have him speak to somebody directly, it's everything changes. When he walks into the room, everything changes. Yeah. It was, you know, the, the scripture of yesterday that I read was, uh, you have made known to me the path of life. Mm. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> obviously, I was filled with joy. They were filled with joy. They they sensed the Lord's love that showed up. Um, just wows me. It's so cool. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was waiting for somebody to say something like that. I know. I was like, you know what family is on here, Sarah? You are family. Yep. I, you know, Sarah, there are huge ranches here. I really feel like this would be a great place and much, you know, no snow removal, really. <laughs> mm -hmm. Olivia we could have all the horses she wants. So many horse ranches. That's a lot of horse ranches. <laughs> Let's just all transplant <laughs> together. <laughs> Talk to everyone to come to Texas. Uh, um, all right. Yeah. So that's that. <laughs> great testimony, right? And powerful. Uh, I just... It, it really kind of walks into a little bit what I want to talk about in Acts Good. as well. And so, uh, I, but why don't you do that? Cause mine probably has more to do with like testimony of yesterday. Okay, cool. Another the other part two of testimony. So that testimony of praying with Sam and Abby, right? Amen, Sarah. Is awesome. And what, when I was reading this morning, so when we soap this, we read chapter, read Acts chapter three. What chapter jumped out, and uh, it was three twelve, and this is just kind of how it's speaking to me. It says when Peter saw this, so basically Peter, Peter and John heal heal this guy that's been crippled ever since birth, mm -hmm. and um, you know they see a, a sign and a wonder, right? And what uh, what I like how Peter he sees that while the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them, and in the place called. Um, Sol uh, Solomon's colonnade. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? And um, I just, the, the thing that stuck out with me is godliness. And, and when I read this, what I find in my own life is that when I'm hesitant to go step out and bless somebody or go and pray with somebody or do something like that, it's because I feel like it has to do with, oh, I'm wondering, I just, today I did this, I did that. I wasn't really in the word. I didn't, I didn't pray. I didn't do something that was godliness mm. you know, to me. So like, I think, well, today yeah, I went I... to church and then I, <laughs> you know, I went to a, a Bible study mm. group this morning and then I did whatever. So like, sometimes I get caught up in this, well, I'm not really feeling godly. And so I don't really want to go talk to that person or bless them or engage in this situation. And I, and I get that. But when I read this today, I just was thinking like, it's not about me. It's about God anyway. So I just need to be faithful and step out and let God do his thing. And so that's really what, when I read this, it jumped out at me is, you know, in the situation with Sam and Abby, I wasn't really feeling like blessing somebody right then. It's just, but I'm like, I got to do it. It's kind of, one of those things I know I won't be disappointed. Yeah. I need to step in. And when I step into this, the Lord will show up. The Lord's going to show up. He always does. Yep. And, <laughs> uh, and I'm filled up with joy in his presence. And so it's, it's kind of fun for me to, to realize this because it's many times it's, I have to do the action step mm. and then I see the results, right? Mm -hmm. It's not like I have to be moving in the results to all of a sudden say, well, now I'm going to go and do these more, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah. And so just to continue to step in and just in faith and, and watch God move in my life. And that's, that's kind of been the thing, you know, it's, these blessings are incredible and wowing me all the time. You know, you have some simple ones yet. You have some that are just really powerful too. And I think they're all powerful. It's just however I'm perceiving them. So, um, so anyway, that my, my prayer is. Our action is just to continue to step in and love people well, pray, bless, speak life, be on watch for opportunities and, uh, don't, don't gauge it on how I feel, but look at the opportunity and does it need the Lord in it? And I just put like, Lord, my prayer is be with me. Give me courage 
all the time to love well. Mm. And may I know that it is not always up. It's not always about me. And how you're feeling. And how I'm feeling. Yeah. If you're uncomfortable. <laughs> The Lord is in it, and He He wants to say yes to loving and miracles every day. So, anyway, that's that's my prayer. So, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your just faithfulness all the time, and uh, your word. Amen. Amen. You're up. Okay, <laughs> and then you can give the rest of the day yesterday. So, I had out of Exodus twenty, I had verse six. So this is going through Exodus 20 is the Ten Commandments and um, verse 6 says but I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations on those who love me and obey my commands directly before that it was I lay the sins of the parents upon their children the entire family is affected even children in the third and fourth generations of those who reject me obviously I don't want to be in that camp so, but I like verse six, but I lavish unfailing love for a thousand generations. It's mm. a really, really long time Amen. on those who love me and obey my commands. Mm. And I read that and it just struck me right away that the Lord does lavish his unfailing love over me, over Josh, over our children. And so I just started having this heart of thankfulness for the generations, family lines before me that have loved the Lord and obeyed his commands so that we could walk in that unfailing love. Mm. And I'm so incredibly thankful for that. And two people that came to my mind, you know, I don't know all the generations of my family history or Josh's, we're, we're learning <laughs> in the last couple days. Um, but two people that came to my mind in particular, two grandmas, is my grandma DeBoer, so my mom's mom. She has passed on and is, I am most certain, in heaven with the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, she was one of the most kind and loving people that I ever knew. She didn't play favorites at all. She ran a daycare in her home when she was still in her upper 50s to 60s. I mean, it was almost until she passed away from cancer that she was still um <laughs> that she was still 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 loving these children and it, they just I mean they called her grandma Gert Gertrude was her name and she was just so amazing you had met her right yeah yeah oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah yep oh. and then grandma T yeah. who is Josh's grandma grandma Trickstead she's 96 she's still living yes this woman Praise is God. like on no medications it's incredible from my pharmacy background that's really unique <laughs> and, um she is incredible we just we, you know sometimes the kids will say well is grandma T happy because she is nearly blind and she can't hear real great and she can't do a whole lot, right? She gets to walk the hallway a couple times a day. She eats, you know, and, and in general, she's in general good health. But otherwise, she just kind of sits in her chair all day and naps and, you know, whatever. Whatever you do when you're 96 and you don't have to work and you can't work anymore. <laughs> and so yeah, yeah. Um, the kids will have asked, like, is she happy? Like, is it, you know, is she happy? Is she happy that she's still alive? Mm -hmm. And I have said, there's a reason why she's still alive. Mm -hmm. You know, I really feel like she is a praying woman and there are people in the family coming to salvation or their seeds being planted every day that grandma, grandma T is alive. Mm -hmm. I truly believe that, that the Lord has her here for a reason. And I think she knows that, you know, cause she, she will, you know, how old did her mom live till? She, there's a lot of longevity. It's 99. Yeah, 99. And so everybody says, well, are you going to live until you're 100? And she's like, I don't know. You know, <laughs> I don't know. That's kind of, I don't know why it's like such a milestone to make it to 100. I mean, it's incredible. We live 100 years. Wow. A whole century. So um, I, my application is that I want to leave a legacy like those two grandmas. And it doesn't. It can be financial, but it doesn't have to be. That's what the Lord was showing me last night that, yes, it's great to set your kids up financially for success and amazing, an amazing future where they don't really have to strive and work for things. Oh. But what about leaving a legacy of godliness? What about leaving this legacy of giving, of generosity? 
And that that's really where I want to spend my time. My um, my good friend Dawn was just leaving me a message, and I won't get into the details of what she was talking about, but she just said, you know, our resources of time and money. What mm -hmm. is more valuable to me in this season? And she's like, honestly, it's time with my family mm -hmm. is more valuable in this season. And, and so I want to cultivate that. I want to look beyond myself and my life and look at what kind of legacy I can leave for my kids, my grandkids, a thousand generations by me loving the Lord and obeying his commands will be mm -hmm. affected by what I do in this lifetime. Once again, mm -hmm. it's not about me. <laughs> Set the foundation. I don't even need them to know who I was or whatever. Like they will just kind of real because there's a lot of times where we will say to ourselves, why do we walk in such favor? Like, mm. why, why are we so blessed, Lord? What, mm -hmm. what, what has happened? And I really reading this, I'm like, wow, it's, it's not because of what we're doing necessarily. That can be a piece of it, but it's really mm -hmm. what has been cultivated in the generations before us. Mm -hmm. So thank you generations before us. Yes. Yes. Thank you for uh, your prayers and, uh, setting that foundation and, um, yeah, it's powerful stuff. So amazing. So speaking of legacy, yeah. So and finding more legacy. <laughs> if you're uh, first time joining us, um, in the last couple days, this, this last couple <laughs> days have been pretty impactful for me personally. Um, I haven't known my father who that is, um, for 42 years. And I, uh, found out a, a few months ago or yeah, I got some tips on like who it September. probably could be and all that stuff. And just haven't been able to connect. And, um, on Sunday, last Sunday we connected or know how to connect. <laughs> and, uh, and then even more powerful, it was, um, yesterday after our soap study, um, I had the opportunity to, uh, meet my dad face to face. And yeah, they uh, had done like a, we did a video call. call messenger call on Sunday evening, Sunday evening. And then, uh, Monday I met my, one of my sister's and her husband and their two kids, which was incredible on Monday night. Yeah. And then yesterday after a soap, so around 930, I went and met my dad at Panera Bread. And so we went and just me and him. Yeah. Which was good. We just kind of connected and talked and talked about just some past and and uh, just learning more about each other, which was fun. He shared a lot about Taekwondo and stuff, which is fun, because if you guys know me, I'm, I was into Taekwondo as well. And and uh, just kind of his past stuff that he's done and with engineering and General Motors and stuff like that, which was awesome to hear about. And it's just fun because not knowing your father and then to hear like the characteristics or his gifts and talents of what he has, that I have a lot of those same things just naturally. So it's... Yeah. it's kind of one of those whatever it's the nature versus nurture very interesting to see how it yeah how it just like it's innate that I uh I have those characteristics so it's super cool and just to listen to him and hear his story and just to get caught up it's it's pretty <laughs> awesome <up>. like, Neat. <laughs> blown away by it and you know and then to even hear about his faith and mm. uh, that journey was very helpful for me to find out that he's a Christian and that uh, his wife now was a part of that journey for him. And uh, that that really impacted me too, to like, wow, praise God that he's been laying this out. He's had this all planned out. Mm -hmm. And of course, if I didn't share it, um, I believe, uh, well, I've, I've met two of my sisters. There's one more I haven't met yet. And, um, you know, they're believers as well. It just is like, Lord, yeah. our family is just into it. Sarah's saying generational stuff has been getting prayed for. And the Lord knows, and he's working through family right now and restoring it. It's just super powerful. So we, we met for a while, even when we were there, God shows up again because, uh, <laughs> my dad goes to this guy. He's like, Hey, can you take our picture? And just a random guy walking by and he, he's like, sure. And so we get up and, uh, take a picture. I'll have to share the picture. Cause, uh, my dad is like less than five foot tall. So I, I look very tall Which to Josh him. is like five eight. I'm like five eight, so I'm not that tall either, but I look taller. Now he's like a giant. Anyway, he's taking our <laughs> picture, which is fun. And uh and somehow I'll I go to him and go, hey, I go, hey, this is this is my dad. I haven't never met him. I was the first time meeting him in 42 years. And the guy's like, really? Wow. And I go, yeah, it's just totally a God thing. And and we started talking a little bit more and and I think uh 
Vink is my dad's name. He's like, tells him like, yeah, you know, he's traveling through and blah, blah, blah. And, and the guy's like, oh really? And, and so I started talking to him and he goes, yeah, we have a motor home and, and we travel around in it and we're staying at the whatever park. We live full time in it. Yeah. He's like, wow. He goes, um, well, we actually, uh, have a motor home and we got five kids and we're staying at blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, huh, well, that's cool. And so I go, you must be working, working from your, you know, Pemnera, because I do that a lot too. And he goes, yep, I'm coming here for some meetings to talk on the, <laughs> on my phone, whatever. And his family's back at the camper. Uh... Anyway, I go, I'm guessing you're a Christian too. And he's like, yeah. And I, and I said, huh, I go, that's awesome. So cool to meet you. And um, I said, I'd love to hear more about your family's journey and what you're doing. And he goes, yeah, I'll give you my card. He gives me this card. And it's East and West Ministries or something like that. East to West. East to West. So I'm like, what is this all about? He goes and tells me what his ministry is or what he does. It's incredible. I, I'm excited to hear more about. It. Basically, they put missionaries or students or um, like school of ministry students. School ministry students. So they'd be maybe college age or older. I mean, you can do school ministry at any point in your life call and they and they place them into apartments as like the apartment managers in these bigger apartments and then these students are i shouldn't whatever they are you know the like ministry yeah managers um <laughs> their whole intention is to basically form community and witness to all of the people that live in the apartment Start building bible studies get people in the word yeah in and these just apartment to, buildings. and just to love well so, so cool I was, that's a, that is genius. And it's basically their thing is like, they go and reach the people that are not typically reached. And, uh, so I don't know, I, I want to hear more about where they're at, what neighborhoods, what they do. And, um, I've kind of had visions of this, like ideas when I'm talking to some other investor friends. And so I was super encouraged by it. And I'm like, well, this is a divine appointment that we get to mm -hmm. meet. His name was Bud, another Bud. And there's a Bud Norris on here. And so anyway, so powerful thing there. And then Jeff after that, um, we uh, set up to have a meeting with Sarah and the kiddos with my dad as well. And um, so our kids got to meet grandpa yeah, for the first time. So they're excited because they... It was really cool. Vink is saying, I'm grandpa. I was like, <laughs> oh, I just love this. Like, it's just, it it like couldn't go better. Yeah. Like we couldn't have even thought of it going better. You just don't oh. know. Like, how are people going to receive this? Would somebody say like, no, Josh, you're not, this is, you know, this didn't happen. They could deny it. And, and the sisters and, um, Vink have been so welcoming, like just incredible. So if you listen to I'm our word on our word on Monday about acceleration, a season of acceleration, pastor yeah. Chris at movement church prophesied that and we're receiving it and this is an example of the mm -hmm. lord's acceleration but yesterday was such a powerful day it went from me and vink meeting to him questioning if i was his son to the end of the day to call on our saying our kids call me grandpa so it's just him like doing a facebook post saying this is my american son <laughs> yeah like i'm so blown away that within i don't know it's been 36 hours three days to, to go to this kind of thing. And it's just, even with my sisters, there is a bond there that is from the Lord. It, it to just link us so quickly has been so powerful. And, um, so like Sarah said, we're just kind of in awe and going, I praise they're all God in awe as well. <laughs> praise God for this reunion, for this timing, for what he's doing for restoration and, uh, yeah. just knitting hearts together so quickly. Yeah. Um, it's such a special thing and uh, it's even been great, you know, and I've been so blessed. My mom has been so yeah. encouraging as well um, with this whole thing. And uh, I, I'm so appreciative of that because I can understand it could stir up a lot of hurts there. So mm -hmm. thank you, mom, for being such a big part of this as well. And uh, it's been super incredible. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, I just, I think all night last night, I was just sort of dreaming about this off and on. And I really was feeling like, they, the, um, Josh's new fam, our new family has something for us and we have something for them. Yeah. And there's like this divine exchange in the Lord's perfect timing. Like we talked about yesterday that it's coming together to add momentum to each family's lives individually, but then also as a big family that we will accelerate together, whatever that may look like. So we're trying to figure out, do we hang out here more, a couple more days? Like this is the beauty of our lifestyles. We have this absolute flexibility to yeah. sort of, 
I have no reservations anywhere until actually May in Arkansas. And that's only because somebody wanted to meet us there. But, uh, um, yeah, so I, we're, we're trying to figure it out. Like our kids just want to hang out with their new cousins a lot more and, uh, meet the other ones they haven't met yet. We yeah, haven't met a, one of the sister or yeah. two of the sisters yet. So, Elizabeth, it'd be, so it'd be great to, to meet them and just like kind of establish like connection while we're still here so that when we come back, it's just sort of flows into even more. Yeah. So they have, they've mm. welcomed us so well and, uh, it's, I, like I said, I'm blown away. It's, it's one of those things that, you know, you kind of visualize in your head, what's this going to look like? How would this happen? Yeah. And this is how do you visualize that, 10 though? times I mean, better than what I even thought could have been the best case. Yep. So thank you, father, for your goodness. Yeah. And just, and for open hearts, open minds, yeah. like that's huge. It's yeah, it's, it's amazing. So we, yeah. we, we just declare that over anybody out there that mm. is, uh, that's been praying into this, you know, restoration of their families or just coming together that, or if it's just that acceleration thing, whatever it is, we just release that in Jesus name over you as well. You know, as we receive yes. it, we want to release it. And yes. uh, the Lord has blessed us with that. And uh, we have more of a faith for it right now. And so we want to release it over you and your family that wherever you thought, maybe there was no way God has a way. And so may you pull on this mm -hmm. testimony as just a, a testimony of faith that God can restore anything the enemy has tried to, to destroy. Yes. And uh, he's doing that right now in, in my family. And I release it over you and your family as well. Yeah. And your circumstance. I pray this in Jesus' name. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, anyway, I'll post some photos. I kind of wanted to hold off because I didn't know how they felt about that. But they're posting photos. So it's like, that means I can. <laughs> <laughs> Because uh, I have no reservations for that stuff. I love it. But, um, but yeah, we don't want to overstep any boundaries. It's or just, whatever. it's a lot more for them because <laughs> I've known this my whole life. They have not known this until Sunday. <laughs> so you can kind of imagine I've had a whole yes. lifetime to prepare for this kind of thing. Yeah, a possibility of this happening. Where it's kind of a shocker to their whole line that, okay, we have another whole family. So, <laughs> But like I said, they're receiving it super well. Yeah. So. Josh was even on another Zoom call last night with two of the sisters, and yeah. it's just, it's really fun. Mm, that's beautiful, Emily. Thank you. Yeah, God is good. He's giving back. Ah, so, love that. So, anyway, uh, super excited. We'll keep you posted on how this journey goes. Um, it's <laughs> Where it's will incredible. Be yeah, we'll, I don't know. <laughs> we'll keep you posted on what we do the rest of this uh, couple days here. So, all right, love you all, and uh, look forward to. Talking to you tomorrow morning. Yeah, bless you. Yeah. Have an amazing day. Have a good day. See ya. Bye.